time here at camp. Clarence Hill, Star Telegram, David Moore, Dallas Morning News. As scrimmages go, this one was rather entertaining. What did you make of the Wilcox Dez exchange out there? Well, Dez had been exchanging words, shall we say, with the defense all day. I think uh, Wilcox took an opportunity, may have been overly aggressive with it, uh, was certainly ready for what came afterwards. He knew Dez was going to come after him. He welcomed that. I don't think anyone in the defensive room tonight will have any problem with what J.J. Wilcox did. And nobody was saying that they had a problem, no, no offensive guys either, including the, the head coach, the quarterback. But clearly, you got to be more careful than that against your top receiver. Well, you do, but again, for a defense that was 32nd in the league last year, they have a chip on their shoulders. And talking to Romo after after the scrimmage, they like the fight in the defense. Certainly, you want to be careful with guys like this. You know, he is your top commodity on offense. But they like to fight. The defense bowed up. Certainly Dez and Witten were talking trash throughout the whole practice. You know, every time they made a play, they were talking trash. You can't stop us. Get off the field. And certainly you like the fact that this defense bowed up. I don't know if they bowed up enough last year, but they bowed up on this practice field. And pe people focus on Wilcox and Dez. Was, but in my mind, it started earlier with Skandrick and yeah, Dez. Yeah, right. And, and Skandrick was really talking about afterwards. You know, he was asked, okay, were you making a conscious effort to set a tone in this practice, or is this just the two of you competing? And he said him and Dez got together last night and said, you know what, people feed off of us, people watch to see what we're doing. We're going to go out there and we're going to go after it. So this was a this was a concerted effort uh, to kind of rile both sides up, if you will. Chris Romo's health is the headline story of this camp, and, and I mentioned in the highlights a few minutes ago. You know, he threw a couple of ducks, and, 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 <laughs> and you know, alarm bells are going to going to go off. Do you see anything today that that's changed your mind about where he is health wise, and then where do you think that is? No, he, he seems to be okay, and actually, he told us after practice that he's not going to play in the preseason right, opener. Right. You know, so you know they're still being cautious with him. He said we're still Which is trying no to different than a lot than a lot of other years. I no, understand. you're still trying to be smart uh, with Romo. He didn't, you know, he looked like Romo. Certainly, you know, there were some bad throws, but he didn't look any worse for the wear today. You were a conspiracy theorist in this regard, one of those who thinks that that it's maybe worse than they're they're letting on, and that. Uh, that Romo can be in real trouble here? No, because I think what they're doing here, I, I think the organization and Tony generally have done a very poor job of articulating what they're doing with him in this camp. But I think the whole idea is, you know, you don't necessarily want a guy 100% right now. You want him 100% for the season opener on September 7th against San Francisco. You want him to be able to practice throughout the season. And if being cautious with him here gives you a better chance of not missing practice through the season and spotting him, then I think it makes sense. But the thing is, you have no assurance of that. So you mean the way they're handling Rome was kind of how they handle game management? <laughs> so, so what are you saying there? <laughs> yeah, what do you think? What, what segue is this? They're not on Please. the same page. <laughs> <laughs> You've been concentrating on this defense, and you've referenced it already, kind of the different attitude they, they need to have. Obviously, you need players, too. Right. Right? And you've got to be worried just from a pass rush standpoint how this team is going to get pressure on the quarter. Well, well, certainly, you do need players. And, you know, the, I'm writing about the start talk on, on Monday, but, you know, the Cowboys are putting all that hope in the defense coordinator, Rob Marinelli. You know, he's trying to get the most out of each guy. Certainly, you don't have the names that he had in the past. You don't have a... DeMarcus Ware, or Jay Rattler, or Anthony Spencer, or any guys with a Pro Bowl resume, but his job is to get the most out of each guy, try to have each guy have career years. Certainly, that's what happened with Henry Melton in Chicago. That's what happened with George Selvey last year. He's trying to get these guys to play the best they can be, and certainly play with some fight, which they showed today. He's talked to them about being prideful, we'll talked about you know, have an opportunity to do something. That's what they showed in practice. That's what they hope for this defense. They they may not be, you know, the number one defense in the league, but they will be better. They hope to be better because Marinelli is going to get the best out of each guy. What's it going to take for this defense to, to improve upon its status as one of the worst in the history of the league last year? <laughs> Just show up. I mean, Rick, you listen to what Jerry Jones has said and Stephen Jones has said. In essence, that's what they're saying because you say, well, you lost – some of your key guys, you lost Sean Lee, you lost to Marcus Ware, you lost Jason Hatcher. How is it you can say that you will improve defensively? And the response is, because we can't be as bad as we were last year. They're, going, they're banking on better depth, more youth, more speed, and just the idea that we can't continue to have all of these injuries pile up at one position as we have in the past. Yeah, Jerry, it's been noted, has stayed away from using the term Super Bowl at this camp. His expectations clearly are tempered. What do you make from that? Is he trying to lessen the, the, the pressure on his head coach and, and look for an excuse to maybe not necessarily cut Jason loose <laughs> should they not make the playoffs again this year? 
I, I don't know if it goes that deep, but, but I would say that one reality after these 17 years has to have sunk in it to some respect, and I think you're seeing that uh, adjusting the, the expectations. 17 years is a magic bit. number, apparently. <laughs> I, 17. I believe okay. so. <laughs> and uh, um, I, I just think that you know, for so many years, people have expected more out of this Cowboys team than I think their personnel was really equipped to give them. Now, I think Jerry's finally settled into, you know what, why do we have, always have to put ourselves out there? Maybe it's better to have lower expectations and see what we can do with that. I, I certainly don't think that anything he can say or do will take any pressure off of Garrett. I mean, he's in the last year of his contract. I mean, it's one thing to go 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, and and allow him to continue and not fire him, but it's another thing to give him a new deal. The Cowboys have to get in the playoffs. They have to show some type of improvement. You cannot sell another playoff of the season. You cannot sell another 8-8 eight and eight to the fans going forward. You wrote about uh, the running game and how Murray will believe it when he sees it if the Cowboys uh, Everybody will believe it when right. they yeah, see it, yes. No doubt. Any reason to truly believe Linehan, who didn't throw it or didn't run Denver. it very much in Detroit, will, will run it more here? I just think there's mounting evidence here that, that really shows they will run more. I, I think last year they really were a pretty good running team in the second half of the season, but it was almost like they had been so bad for so long the coaching staff didn't believe their eyes and they still called games as if they couldn't run. But I think when they went back and reviewed it, they went, you know what, we were pretty good running the ball in the second half of the season. Our offensive line's even better now that we're plugging Zach Martin in there. We have a quarterback who's 34 coming off two back surgeries. We have a defense that's sunk to historic depths. We really have to run the ball more. And it's interesting, Stephen Jones doesn't say, you know, I think you'll see us run more this year. It's a declarative, we will run the ball more. I think that's a mandate from the top. You buy it? Yeah, no doubt. And, and he said we're going to change our personality from a passing team to a running team because of the offensive line and because of DeMarco Murray. And he talked about it earlier. DeMarco Murray rushed for the third most yards in NFL of the last eight games last year. He really came on at the, end, at the end of last season. The Cowboys saw that. Again, it's right out there. When Murray carries the ball 20 or more times, the Cowboys are 11-0. and The evidence is out there. Give Murray the ball, and the Cowboys have success. And that's something, certainly with, with Romo coming off a of back surgery, you want to take some pressure off to him. You also want to take some pressure off that defense. How do you help that defense? If you don't improve as far as players on defense, you run the ball and control the ball on offense. That's what Murray in the running game. And people talk about balance, but this isn't going to be a 50-50 split. In today's NFL, balance isn't a 50-50 split. I think a 55-45 leaning toward the pass is something good to point right. toward. You go back to 2009, the last time they won the division and were a top 10 rushing team, that was roughly the split. But these last two years, they've run 35% of the time and 34% of the time. That's way too low. They have and, to bump that And up. one last thing. You talked about Linhan in Detroit. He ran the ball more in Detroit than the Cowboys did last year. Mm. We'll, so end there. we'll end on that. We'll end on that. We're only a little over time this time with you guys. That's that's good. We appreciate it. Great information as always. I'm leaving camp tomorrow. Oh. You guys gonna be all right? Well, we'll, we'll make it. Okay. Try Thank to you. fight your way through. Clarence Hill, Star Telegram, David Moore from the Dallas Morning News. Thanks very much.